Hey guys, Common Sense Outdoorsman. I want to show you this jacket. This jacket is from the uh, DLA batch is from 1992. That doesn't necessarily mean it was made in 92, but I did get this in the early 90s when I was still at Plattsburgh Air Force Base, upstate New York. And I want to talk about a little history from a, from just from a user's perspective. I was in the Air Force for 20 years. I, I came in in uh, 1982. And that was the good time to come in to see a big difference in military gear because when I came in in 82, they were still issuing the old cotton uh, fatigue utility uniforms. They were still issuing the cotton ones. I did not get the cotton ones in basic training. Uh, we got the, uh, the newer um, synthetic ones, polyester, whatever, but the cotton ones were still on the shelf, okay? And... Um, I really, in the early 80s, we were right at the tail end of the bad gear era. And um, and what I mean by that is, okay, for um, stuff to protect us from the weather, um, when I first came in, I, my first duty station was Grand Forks, North Dakota. Um, and I won't even talk about the cold there, but about the wetness when it was you know, above freezing 30s, 40s, and you were out there at a missile silo all day long, 16 hours, and all you had was your gear to protect you in a sputtering Dodge, you know, 1978 Dodge truck. Uh, you had to rely on your gear, but we didn't have stuff like this. We were still using the old rubberized uh, uh, rain suit with the bibs and the coat. It was very stiff, very hard. It wore out easily. Um, it got wet easily and it was just a hard thing to wear and to work in and it was the same for the the military poncho at the time it was we got issued the rubberized ones and you went when you were out there all day like that in in that bad weather it, it was really miserable and we also longed for uh, a lot better gear and something that would uh, work so much better and then I cross-trained. I got out of missiles. I went into aircraft uh, maintenance. And as the 80s went on, we kept hearing about all this new technology that was coming out. I still enjoyed wearing the old cotton um, thermals and stuff like that. I thought they were better than the polypropylene. But uh, the, uh, the first gen of polypropylene that the military used was terrible. It, it wore out quick. It was uncomfortable. It pilled. It looked it looked bad and all that stuff but <clears throat> what we longed for at the time besides our wonderful field jacket that is the best the m65 field jacket um, you needed something in just that miserable wet weather above freezing where you need really needed good wet protection to protect yourself um, and, and enable you to, to, to work when you're in an operational unit and you got to be out there all day at a missile silo on the flight line, you're working airplanes, you're trying to, to, to wire an engine, all that other stuff in that bad weather. It, it, it is miserable. And then we heard, hey, I, I'm going to say it was probably, it might have been 87, 88 or whatever when we first got these issued. And we were like, oh my God what kind of voodoo is this but this is the first gen uh gore-tex uh extended cold weather clothing system cold weather parka right here and this one this was not the first one i was ever issued um i have an extra large one also i think i still have it right now but i was issued this one in the early 90s this was from the uh made by tennessee industries and I'll give you, see if we can get a decent shot of the tag there. Okay, so you can read that. Yeah, that is my last name. I don't care. Um, but yeah, so this was from 92. And we got these and it really changed our comfort level of, of working in bad weather. And it was like, yeah, everybody loved these. I remember... Um, you know, having to fly long hours on a C-130, and I'm not talking three or four hours, I'm talking 15, 16, 18 hours on a cold, noisy, crappy, they're good planes, but to, to ride in it in the cargo bay like that is pretty miserable, but I would always take my extra large one, and you could put that thing on, 
And for some reason, these are just like a Wooby. It just gives you a comfort level, okay? And you could put this on, and you could put your hood up, and you could, you know, you know, get yourself comfortable in a pallet of A3 bags, find yourself something to put your hood over your face, and it, it just gave you just a comfort, and you would wear this on the plane, and I always had a hard time sleeping on those things. But anyways, it was just a very comfortable, nice... There was a lot of air moving around in the cargo bay of a C-130, and this would block that. And it was just a very nice, comfortable item. And um, <clears throat> But the biggest thing was, yeah, when you're working outside on airplanes, missiles, whatever, and, and you have to rely on your, your, your gear, this was it. This could keep you dry for an extended long period of time, and it didn't... You know, a lot of the stuff, that old rubberized stuff and the ponchos and the, the two pieces and everything, eventually the water makes its way into that pretty quickly. These would stave that off a lot longer. If you're out there in driving rain with this on, yeah, you can, it's eventually going to get wet inside. Anything will, but these did the best job. And I think today guys like these better because these had the inner liner. Okay, they're a little bit heavier than the Gen 2s and the Gen 3s, and I, I think I would rather have this one than the newer ones because this was, was good when it was, in, when it was 35 degrees out and rainy and everything. You put this over, you, it, what I would do is I'd have my, um, you know, my utility shirt on. I'd have the uh, wool sweater kicking myself in the butt. I got rid of those. My wool sweater on, my uh, utility shirt, my BDU shirt. And then uh, my good old M65 field jacket, and you could put this over that, and you you were feeling pretty good. You'd have the hood up if you were outside, and you could stay dry, and it was just a lot more comfort. I just remember it's like, you know, with my guys, you know, hey, bad weather, get on the flight line, get that job done. I don't want to hear any complaining because you guys got some good gear now, so get your butts out there and, and get it done. I don't want to hear that that crying. And um, <clears throat> how do they wear? They wear like iron. I've had this, obviously, for more than 30 years. Do I wear it a lot? No. But um, you can, they're, they're wash and wear. They wash fairly well. Um, our first concern was they might not be as rugged as the M65 field jacket, and they're not, but they're pretty rugged. And you could really, you could abuse these things, and they would hold up. So uh, it, it really made a big difference in uh, military cold weather, uh, you know, uh, rain protection type gear. And it really changed our business in, in the Air Force. And, and this really allowed us with the, uh, let me take you down. You know, you've got pockets on the side in this Velcro and snaps, big pockets. You could put your stuff in there. You've got these inner flat pockets on both sides. You could put your hat in there, gloves, what have you. And uh, you've got these nifty, this side is this side. You've got a nice waterproof sleeve pocket there. In maintenance, we needed to have, you know, uh, pens, pencils, writing stuff, little notepads, whatever. That was great for that. Um, nice uh, nylon liner on the inside. You could cinch it up. The bottom was elasticized to keep the wind from blowing up your skirt and the snow from blowing up in there. Uh, YKK zippers worked great. Um, in the back, you know, you've got a little ventilation flap in the upper back there. There you can see the Gore-Tex material. It does say um, Gore-Tex on there. Um, and then you got these nifty little vents on the armpits, okay, with the zipper. You could open those up and uh, vent your pits if you had to. But, I, I mean, this, these jackets... These parkas were really a an excellent uh, piece of equipment to use, and and you didn't want to go if you were, you know, deploying and getting on the plane doing something. If you knew you had to work long hours and crappy weather, sometimes, you know, back in Grand Forks, we it would you know you're, you're three hours by truck away from the base, and you're you you've got to take your stuff with you, and. Uh, we didn't have these then, but if we did, this would be something that you would not want to leave the base with. You always had this with you. 
And whether you were just wearing it after the time goes on, you become an NCO, you got to look good. You're going to have one for dressier occasions. You don't get dirty. You go to meetings and everything and you wear them. And, and for a lot of guys, I think they replaced their uh, field jacket with these. I, I love the field jacket. I love the look. I love the versatility of it. That was always my main jacket. But um, if I knew I, I needed some good weather protection, I, I would have this. You have to have this. But um, yeah, so uh, the hood has the snaps in it and you could get that little furry thing. I never wore that. I never liked that. Some guys would put their uh, quilted uh, field jacket liners inside here. You could do that. I, I never did like those. Those to me just didn't, didn't fit right. Um, you know, you could cinch up your hood. It's got the uh, the pull strings. They're not uh, the bungee corded type like they have now, but you could cinch that up. And uh, really a good protective shell from the elements. Okay, so yeah, I think most people today, they prefer these. If, if you needed one survival item, something, if you're going out and there's a chance of weather and and you could fit this and carry this, you you were in pretty good shape, okay? Um, the newer ones, the Gen 2, Gen 3s are lighter. They don't have the lining in, in that nylon lining. They're easier to pack though, you'll, you'll have it with you. These are a little bulkier. So, you know, you have to purposely carry these. You can scrunch them down somewhat and you can do it, but um, sometimes you, you may not have this because it's a little bit bulky. But uh, the newer ones were a lot, you could really fold those up and uh, always have those with you because they were just easier to carry. But I think this was the better all around garment that could, um, you know, protect you from the elements. Um, yeah, I've had this for so long. Wears like iron. I'm going to say if you want a good outdoor, cold weather, rainproof type jacket, definitely look for these. I think um, you should be able to find one in decent shape for well less than a hundred bucks. Um, new, you know, they could be upwards of 200 depending on where you, you get them from. But yeah, the uh, extended cold weather um, parka shell, excellent, excellent piece of equipment, definitely recommended. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll have, uh, like I said, <clears throat> at when I retired, I was at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. Very warm weather. I had a ton of gear, ton of cold weather gear after 20 years in the military. But I lived in Virginia for 22 years, and over the, the years, I got rid of a lot of stuff. I had the, the pants for these. I never did like the pants too much. They kind of fell down a little bit for me and that kind of thing. But I wish I would have kept some of the gear kicking myself in the butt over my uh, wool sweaters I got rid of. What was I thinking? I don't know. But uh, anyways, I do have some gear, so we'll do some more videos like this in the future, show you different combinations of what I would wear. But um, yeah, uh, it's more so than getting too technical about it, just want to share with you what my experiences were uh, with clothing like this and how I used it. All right. So Common Sense Outdoorsman, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.